Hello, I am Fantastic and Fantastic, and today I'm going to be talking about the enchanting mechanic within Creature Quest. So, this enchanting guide will cover all the different types of enchants that are currently available, which ones are the best, because I will rank each and every one of them, as well as how you can better optimize your own output and or efficiency within each enchant, as well as giving you a relatively good understanding of how to make the most of this new system. And last but not least, I will be offering suggestions or ways to kind of make enchanting a little more meaningful, mostly drawing attention to underwhelming traits that you can inherit onto your cards. So what are enchants? Enchants are basically ways to augment or improve the viability of all of your creatures. Now we can loosely group and or categorize each of the types of enchants based on their resource cost and kind of what they actually do. So wood slash courage enchants are more so for defensive capabilities. Or and slash honor is for offensive utility. Sulfur and spirit are for, well, sulfur slash spirit is for supportive utility as well as debuffing. And last but not least is mercury slash wrath. And these are just the offensive damage and chance. So in addition to these four different categories, we actually have three different tiers within each um, of these enchants. There's bronze, silver, and gold level. And basically the idea is that gold enchants are naturally stronger than their silver counterparts because their ranges of effective value is higher, so, and silver is obviously higher than bronze, so on and so forth. So the issue is like some chance will some enchants will naturally be the stronger option for the most part, but unfortunately at this point in time, there are some enchants that are actually very underwhelming and lackluster, and it's a little sh shameful if you do roll those, especially on silver or gold, because they may have almost no value or even potentially zero value whatsoever. Now, all the enchants do cost varying degrees of resources, and for the most part, the primary slash vanilla kingdom resource of wood or Sulfur and Mercury are going to be the limiting or determinant factor as to whether or not you can pursue each of those enchants. However, while each enchant has a different cost, all the primary kingdom resources have been scaled accordingly, so there's no discount enchant. By that, I mean wood enchants cost twice as much as ore, and sulfur costs twice as much as mercury, which is the common theme throughout kingdoms for the most part. Now, one other thing you have to keep in mind is that all enchants will cost you scrolls and scrolls are basically the research resource used to basically upgrade and improve the buildings of your kingdom and for the most part after a certain extent scrolls become abundant and meaningless so by actually having a way to utilize and dump your scrolls gives more meaning to libraries and just as a good way to utilize undervalued resources like tomes and compendiums for the most part so the enchanting value. So this table here may look a little be a little challenging to see on YouTube, but thankfully if you go to my website and you actually click on this image, it will expand it and enlarge it. You can't see it on my screen, but that's okay. But the idea is you can go there and expand and enlarge it, but you can see the effective range for each of the enchants as well as how much value they provide for the gold, silver, and bronze tiers. So for example, the health enchant provides you with 500 to 1000 health and bronze. Two to three thousand in silver, and a walloping four to five thousand in gold. And we can go through all of these to basically figure out which enchant is going to be most meaningful, and is it worth to actually pursue the higher level one? So wood slash courage enchants. So basically, the wood or courage enchants can be best classified as those that improve the durability or defensive capabilities of your creatures. Unfortunately, only half of them are really valuable, and for the most part, health is just unbelievably, unbelievably powerful to the extent that it outweighs the value of even higher tier of even the second best enchanting option for the most part. So that is a little problematic because just health just provides too much raw stats for the most part. Because it is a flat health gain. There's no condition alongside of it. it doesn't re doesn't say reduce damage from basic. It doesn't have the condition of like basic attack, special abilities, debuffs, poison, burns, so on and so forth. So it's always going to have tremendous value for the most part. And you can argue that damage reduction from special abilities is the second most valuable one because for the most part, the special ability is what kills your creatures. But unfortunately, if we compare the top tier gold health enchant versus the top of the damage reduction from special abilities enchant, we would have to have a special ability hitting us for 33,333 damage to equate 5,000 damage mitigation from 15% in order to equalize the health value from the um, just the flat health. And if you're getting for 33,000, you reduce it down to 28,000, you are still dead. Like, I don't think really any creature is gonna really hit 
28,000 health maybe with like max out shrines with boosting. It's a big stretch, but the point is you're probably dead anyway. So in addition to that, nothing is going to hit you for 33,000 for the most part. So this is kind of unfortunate because health is just so much more powerful for the most part. Now, if we look at the other enchants options available after damage reduction from special abilities, plus protection probably has the most value, especially for your defending bosses, because you can resist incoming debuffs. So if you can resist those debuffs when combined with, say, the luck enchant, you're going to have a very good time, such as like naturally high luck cards like, say, Phoenix. You can resist those debuffs, you can keep burning everyone to oblivion, and you're going to have a great time. Now, altering your damage taken when at full health or half health is not practical because... The window of opportunity is so small, you're almost never at full health, so that's out of the, that's basically thrown out the window. And if you're below half health, you're probably going to die anyways, so it's not really that meaningful for the most part. Maybe it will if you didn't get one shot, but if you get chunked down to like 60-70% and then all of a sudden a big hit, you're probably dead. So it's a little annoying, like it's a little hard to work with. But the last and perhaps least valuable are the damage reduction from debuffed or burn slash poison targets because, well, what cre how many creatures actually provide a debuff of any kind so it's going to be a little annoying because those enchants have zero value for the vast majority of creatures so if i were to rank um the courage enchants health would be by far the best one and then damage reduction versus specials and then protection and then damage reduction versus basic attacks which is mostly for pve and then basically all the rest they're just kind of bad for the most part but like i already mentioned bronze health if fully maxed out to a thousand basically is more efficient than any other silver enchant unless you're receiving a special ability that is hitting you for 11,111 damage. That way it equals 1,000 damage mitigation from the higher end of 9% from the silver enchant. So just keep that in mind. A bronze health is going to outweigh most silvers for the most part. And even possibly a gold of the damage reduction from special abilities. Like, health is just so good. Like, you might as well go for that bronze health. Next is ore and honor enchants. So the ore and honor enchants can best categorize as hybrid offensive or utility traits. And they do have the stat altering attack and defense, which are obviously tremendously powerful. Again, any boss is gaining more value from stat modifying enchants. But what I want to pay homage to is the fact that plus damage to large and bosses is by far the best enchant you could have in this category for defending creatures. Because you're basically enabling yourself to deal significantly more damage, and that's going to be the largest source of damage possibly for your creature. Possibly. So that is a big deal, because those defenders are now going to be amazingly powerful. Unfortunately, defenders that rely on attack or defense for their special ability are getting kind of shut out, because now they can't double dip. If you had luck or power, you can get those from the other categories, and get the, then get the plus damage to boss and larges. So if you don't have... If you're utilizing attack and defense, you're a little sadder for the most part. But if we look at the other possible enchanting options, we do have the counterattack with basic attack, which is relatively poor unless you're a boss because you're probably hitting for at least a meaningful amount of damage. And the mana drain is just awkward because the value is kind of... Like, it's not going to provide that much value. It's not really delaying the opposing creature, and it's just too random. And the whole mana drain mechanic is interesting, but it needs to be reworked or buff tweaked for it to work for the most part. And the increased damage against yellow and red may look kind of strange at first, but it does have minor applications for both offense and defense. So yellow health occurs between 50 and 25%, while red is 24 to 1%. But unfortunately, the yellow damage range abruptly cuts off when you hit the 24% or red. So the yellow window range of opportunity is small, and the red one is also small. So it's going to be hard to really min-max this opportunity, and the only way I could really feasibly see this is perhaps if the yellow one is being used, because yellow is at least high enough up that the bonus damage might be enough to finish off that attacking creature. Conversely, if you're on the offense, you gain bonus damage to yellow creatures on someone that you're using later on in your turn. So you hit, hit your first, second, and third creature, your third one's comboed up, and they've been pushed into yellow. That comboed up creature might do enough damage then to execute that defender. Again, it's kind of niche and situational and hard to really take effect. And in my opinion, they need to either expand the ranges or at least have yellow bleed over into red because yellow already has a lower baseline damage value for the most part. So if we were to rank the honor enchants, the plus damage to large bosses is hands down the best one for defenders. If it's not a defender, we don't really care for it as much. And then it becomes really just attack and defense. And all the rest, but they kind of maybe vary from creature to creature, but they're kind of underwhelming for the most part. They're not even worth listing almost. 
Next is Sulfur and slash Spirit Enchants, and these are best categorized as supportive utility and or debuffing. So they may not seem as flashy because it's only luck, but in actuality, luck is one of the stronger stats because with luck, you gain the chance to gain critical strike, which is the highest form of damage you really can have. You critically strike someone, you're gonna be most likely killing them for the most part. So that's great. You resist critical strike, so again, you last a little longer. And with luck at the same time, you also resist those debuffs and land your debuffs more reliably. However, Sulfur or Spirit Enchants are home to some of the most powerful ones that you may not necessarily be aware of, but you kind of have to get into silver or at least, or obviously gold to truly see that power and benefit. Because I actually rolled a gold Spirit Enchant on my Phoenix, and I managed to get percent power heal on death blow that heals the whole team. And I thought, wow, that's kind of weird. I really wanted luck because that's actually a great thing to have. But this actually proved to be amazingly powerful because with a high power creature like Phoenix, I'm actually able to restore about 50, well, on my Phoenix at least, because I have enough shrines, I have about almost 1600 health restored to everyone whenever the Phoenix kills someone. And the Phoenix counts death blows from his burning special. So you don't actually have to basic attack them down. Any form of killing will result in the death blow for that creature. So your burns and poisons trigger that. AoE triggers it as well. So my Phoenix now is my mana funnel in my attack team. So basically my Phoenix will start burning one creature at a time, which will execute them subsequently. But then every time I kill something, I gain 1600 healing for my entire team. So my Phoenix now just became an off healer and a pretty decent healer for the most part. And that's pretty amazing. Conversely, if we look at the percent health heal from death blow for that single creature, they're going to be restoring seven to 9,000 health for the most part. And I actually rolled gold of this actually on my green giant. Was it gold? I think it was gold. Yeah, it was gold on my green giant. It was like 31%. But basically my green giant is now healing himself for like eight and a half thousand every time he kills something. So green giant just became a great soloing option because now when he picks off a creature, he basically heals himself up significantly so these death blow healing are actually very powerful you gain an off healer if it's your mana funnel or it gives you a high damaging creature who has lack of sustain sustain now so say you had something like frost giant who is possibly a lot more powerful now that this enchant exists because frost giant can solo phoenix bosses but then frost giant's biggest hurdle was the fact that he can't heal himself but if you have this death blow healing this frost giant now becomes a literal killing machine he kills things off like he always would but now he's healing back a third of his health every single time so now he's got like the self-healing of phoenix with the great burst damage potential that's instantaneous of a frost giant so this can definitely change up the landscape for a lot of def offensive creatures and this will probably be reflected in my next tier list like things might be moving back up that were good solo creatures but didn't have that sustain necessarily now these are obviously the sexiest sexier or better enchants in this um category and the other ones are a little less ideal because the ability to generate an extra mana vault can be wonderful, but the thing is, it's not reliable even at 40% at the maximum gold enchant. And this is because you have to very, you often carefully build your team around the fact that you're going to have a specific amount of mana funneled into a creature. And if you're relying on a 40% roll of the dice, it's not going to work out. You're not going to want to have it. So it's a little problematic for the most part maybe it could be useful in pve in those long grindy fights you're like oh cool extra mana but it's not as meaningful for the most part and in pvp you can't really have anything left to chance because your floor one opening is so crucial to your success the other options available are 25 percent chance to apply a 25 percent power burn or poison and it is interesting but it is a little too slow for competitive options burns and poisons do ignore defense so the damage is like a little higher than a 25 percent of a basic attack increase but the thing is you have to let that creature take two actions to get your full value and by that point that creature is probably dead or it may have killed you off already by that point so these burn poisons of a very small amount is not meaningful enough and even a boss who has these burn poison abilities is not going to be dealing that much damage my oath keeper has like the burn poison as his enchant and he actually has a scary amount of power because i rolled a very sexy golden chance and it's only hitting for like maybe 13 1400 and that's pretty sad for the most part so it's not enough damage to be competitive with the other options currently available like if you get say a silver or say a gold of the burning effect it just increases the chance of it landing which is kind of nice at 25 percent but it's a little slow it doesn't even stack of itself if it detonated when you reapplied it maybe that could have value but one thing you can keep in mind is you have an aoe style basic attack like scholar or mage you could have the chance to 
debuff the entire row. This applies to the debuff as well as the dots that can be applied, but again, it's a little too slow for the most part. Now, conversely, we do have the 25% chance to apply a 20% stat debuff, but it's a random stat debuff. It may not even be a helpful one that's going to help you out, so it's too inconsistent. It may hit a bad stat that you don't care for. It's not that reliable. It's kind of lackluster for the most part. Maybe it was a higher percentage and maybe extended to two different types, maybe? like maybe you, like it's hard to really justify it like i could foresee some defenders that rolled gold for the 25 percent putting it on something that has an aoe style special in order to make them act like a, the green statue in a very budget manner when they basic attack they have a chance to debuff you kind of cool but really hard to apply especially getting to that gold value for that 25 percent chance which is what you really need to have to be consistent for the most part but again it's not ranked that high so I rank Luck and Death Blow Healing as the best ones to have. Burn Poisons are at least valuable because at least they provide some value and it's consistent. Extra Mana Ball is good when you're on offense. The stat debuff, it's not enough. It needs to be more than 20% debuff to really be noticeable. And the Self Cleanse, which I failed to mention because it's so useless, is the last one because you have to have a debuff placed on yourself, which is so rare for the most part, and then it's a terribly low chance to cleanse, so it just needs to be removed in my opinion. Mercury and Wrath and Chance. So Wrath and Chance are the last type to be available, and they're kind of the most flashy ones, so to speak. Because Mercury and oh sorry, the Wrath and Chance can augment your power, and they can potentially grant 800 power at the gold level. Now, that is pretty game breaking for the most part because anyone who relies on power is going to love this stat. It's going to greatly alter dungeon defenders because they are going to have the ability to do significantly more damage. And what I really wanna stress is that this boost in power is perhaps the most powerful on AOE or area of effect oriented abilities. Because generally speaking, multi-target abilities have been scaled accordingly to only deal reasonable amounts of damage to those targets. You can't get two out of hand because that's what single target is for for the higher burst damage to one target. AOE ability is supposed to do good amounts of damage, but not necessarily explosive. But when you suddenly add an 800 power to your creature, it lends the ability for those AOE creatures to suddenly deal massive amounts of damage and remove many threats all at the same time. If you've watched my offensive guide, I strongly suggest you utilize a creature that has AOE abilities that do the same amount of damage to at least the whole row. And if you suddenly gain 800 power into that creature, you may only need, say, a four times, maybe a two times, instead of the eight or four times you needed regularly. So you basically save yourself an entire action, lowers the risk of failure, and it's gonna improve your consistency overall. Furthermore, if you have a boss style creature that uses AOE damage like Sphinx, it's gonna hit for an amazingly high amount of damage all of a sudden to everyone. You might wipe out some targets on the first turn. So this is definitely improving the scariness factor of a lot of AOE creatures. Colossus Prime is another incredible um, dungeon defender who could become terrifying with an 800 power enchant. He might just one-shot the entire team. You wouldn't feel very good if that happened, but you'd feel pretty happy if it was your Colossus Prime. If Colossus Prime got that and bonus damage to large boss, watch out world. Now, of course, single target creatures are still going to have amazing potency for their power output, but the thing is they don't necessarily gain all this newfound relevance. It's going to make them better at what they already do, which we kind of expect to begin with. So power aside, Wrath and Chance can also dramatically improve your damage output overall from a critical strike point of view. It improves your critical strike chance by 15% at gold and 100% damage as well in gold. So if you have creatures that are heavily reliant on critical strike damage or critical strike in nature, this is going to be amazing. That skeleton thing that has been terrifying, terrorizing all the astral watchers, gaining a critical strike enchant is going to be unbelievably scary. He already has like 40% bonus crit rate to large and bosses, and then he's going to gain another 15% on top of it. This is actually more powerful than a power out um, a, a power enchant for this creature because he's so reliant on crit. A crit kills something. Improving your crit chance by that much can be stronger than power. So a lot of dungeon defenders may become better off with the crit strike chance for the most part because it's going to enable them to suddenly one-shot something that they would have not been able to do otherwise even with the power enchant. Unfortunately, a lot of other enchants are a little sadder by comparison like Yes, being able to gain 50% chance to double strike of a basic attack at gold is nice, but it's not as meaningful for the most part. It doesn't stack with your special ability, so you're losing that 
output. So if you're special abilitying every other time as a dungeon boss, you're only getting a 25% increase in potency. So again, it's okay. It's kind of awkward for the most part. And gaining your combo multiplier damage is only meaningful on your dungeon offense team. That way you can basically have that creature attack last and then suddenly they're comboed up and they do significantly higher amounts of damage. That can be meaningful as well. But then we start going downhill from there because dealing bonus damage on your full health is just impractical. Like you're never at full health. Something that hits you with a row based basic attack, you're out of full health, you're sad. Like it's kind of pointless. It's The window of opportunity is like zero unless you're first person taking a turn of the entire dungeon not happening for the most part so that's awkward and then being red or yellow is kind of playing like fire if you're low health you might get killed so you want to heal up but obviously doing more damage is meaningful so unless those ranges get maybe increased a little wider for yellow especially maybe it could work out and if full health was changed to 75 percent health or more that way a couple of basic attacks doesn't take you out of your zone so those could be more competitive options if the ranges were a little adjusted for the most part but the thing is with the yellow and red health if you have any passive healing or death blowing a chance you're not going to have the ability to keep yourself low health it's a cool idea in theory but a lot of high-end teams are running like green giant astral watcher which are going to heal you up passively now the last and most certainly least exciting enchant in wrath is detonate dots with a basic attack because almost no like maybe nine out of ten creatures don't have dots maybe i don't even ten percent even have a dot maybe that's very generous so it's going to be useless 100 percent useless for 90 plus percent of the creature population and that is wrong because you shouldn't roll a gold dot enchant dot detonation enchant and have no dot on your creature it's going to be 100 percent useless it only detonates on a basic attack and it's only 15 percent at gold so so many things have to go right for a tiny little bit of damage boost because unless it's a phoenix burn no dot is really meaningful enough because the whole dot detonation mechanic is in a bad spot for the most part so this enchant should be really just removed completely because it doesn't even benefit a creature you get gold of that is worse than any other bronze enchant that's wrong in my opinion so enchant rankings from an offensive point of view power is almost always the best choice then combo damage because basically comboing up your later team members is important because you can finish off things it's a good alternative to power critical strike chance is also great because again same idea you have a chance to do bonus damage surprising bursts potentially next is the chance to double strike of basic attack again it's meaningful damage especially on a comboed up creature at the end you want bonus damage at red and yellow health later on as well in case you're taking damage critical strike damage is lower because critical strike if you critically strike you probably killed something the extra damage is only good on those multi-hit things like say the dark elf which we had from the halloween event and then damage at full health and then detonate dots um wrath and chant rankings for defense is power again critical strike chances becomes better because you want if you critically strike you instantly kill something so that might even be better than power it, it can flip flop it depends on the creature of course Bonus damage at red yellow is the next more meaningful one because again it's it's the most reliable way to improve your damage output. Double striking is okay. Critical strike damage again if you crit something they're dead. So adding damage is kind of whoop dee. Damage when full health doesn't really occur. Like most things are not full health at any point in time. In all honesty, detonating dots is actually above combo damage because combo da multiplier damage doesn't exist from a dungeon defender. So detonating dots ranks above it even though it's absolutely garbage anyways. Now I want to. Um, bring attention to the power of power. So base, presently speaking, basic attacks and basically damage debuffing enchants all scale off of power. And this is problematic for creatures that don't actually use power as their primary resource for their special ability. And this is because your basic attacks are going to be more lackluster because you don't want to pursue power if your primary damaging is not scaling from power. You want to get something else. But then your basic attacks are going to be weaker by comparison. So that's a little problematic. Maybe if they kind of shifted some of the primary stat into a bit more extra damage to help compensate, that could work out. So power still has some value, but your primary stat has a bit more value for that ability overall. And one last thing is that creatures that scale from defense or attack are problematic because they can't double dip on the plus damage to large and bosses. Now, do we go for gold enchants? Because the cost of enchanting rapidly increases as you transition basically to the next tier. And unfortunately, these gains are obviously not as equally scaled. They're not linearly scaling because it costs 20 times more to silver from silver to gold. And the stat boosts are obviously not 20 times higher because that'd be broken. But the thing is, they're usually around about two times more from silver to gold. So you're basically thinking, I'm gonna pay 20 times more of my basic kingdom resource for a chance at gaining two times more of 
hopefully a beneficial stat. But the thing is, you don't want to do that for the most part. You obviously want to optimize bronze first and foremost for every single creature that is used. You want to get the best bronze enchant possible because it's relatively cheap by comparison. And bronze enchants can be powerful because the optimized bronze enchant, enchant often outbeats a lot of the lackluster silver enchants. But now we look at silver versus gold. And the reason um, you should almost always min-max your silver enchant is because Yes, the jump can be meaningful. It's about two times stronger potentially. But the thing is, even if you gain, say, 800 power versus the 400 power range, you're not doubling your damage output. You're doubling the stat gain, but it's not a direct double of the damage outputs if your power is gained by 800 versus 400. So that's something you need to keep in the back of your mind. And the thing is, it's 20 times more. So in theory, you could do 20 enchants, and most categories have 7 or 8 enchants, I believe. So you're going to hit the ideal one at some point in time most likely before the 20th one, so you've technically saved those primary kingdom resources if you go for the min-maxing of silver. Now, obviously you have copious amounts of certain things like, say, sulfur and mercury, if you're like myself and I have too much of those, maybe a couple golden chance and pray you get lucky. I got lucky on some of them, some were not so great, but the idea is it's almost always better to min-max the silver than it is to go for gold for most players. So, ways to improve enchanting. Basically, Enchanting is a way to improve your creatures, and every enchant should be meaningful. And of course, I know that some enchants are going to be stronger than others, but we don't want to get to the point where a bronze enchant is sometimes better than the gold enchants of the same tier, or within the same category, and that's problematic. Like, ideally, the best silver should be somewhat comparable to the worst gold enchants, but that's not the case. The best bronzes sometimes beat out the best golds, or even the worst bronze of, like, say, the health beats out a lot of the other modifiers even found at gold. So that is a problematic area. We need to kind of find a bit of balance. And that's hopefully where like these rankings will come into play. Like the ones at the bottom, the bottom needs help the most. But one thing that we need to understand is that enchanting should always be beneficial to some degree or some certain way. And right now there are some enchants that have zero value whatsoever. And that is wrong. You get a gold enchant, you want it to have a great amount of value because you sunk all those resources. But if you gain dot detonation on a creature that doesn't have dots, you've completely wasted all of your resources and all that time invested. And that is a bad scenario. That's gonna leave a bad taste in players' mouths. So we need to basically take out those enchants that are too situational and or modify the health ranges for those health sensitive enchants because they're too limiting. The window of opportunity is too small for the most part. Last but not least, you should never be able to re-roll an enchant into the same type of enchant at a lower range. So from this example here, my silver enchant, I had 15% chance to cause a two turn stat debuff. I was fishing for something else. I got 13% of the exact same kind. That's wrong. That should not occur. And I've wasted, I've had so many duplicate silver enchants where I got the same enchant but at a lower value. And that made me really sad because that's basically like an entire Grand Wish playthrough for those small, for those medium creatures. I had to play Emperor on Grand Wish once to get those three vials and I just completely wasted them all because I got the same thing again. Kind of weird. At least if it was the reverse. If I had 13 to start and I rolled into 15, that makes sense because that is at least an upgrade. So, in conclusion, enchanting is an exciting mechanic to be added to Creature Quest because it does provide a lot more avenues to spend resources. It basically provides a lot more value or merit to things that were underutilized. So, I like this idea because it gives something grindy to strive and work towards. And I do want to also push the notion that it is worth min-maxing your silver enchants before even trying or thinking about gold because it's costing you 20 times more for those golden chants. So unless you have an absurd amount of those resources lying around, it's better to optimize those silver enchants overall. So last but not least, I do want you to join my Discord server. I have a pretty bumpin' Creature Quest Discord server that has a lot of players from all varying skill levels from the top of gold to all the brand new players that are funneling into the game. So check out my Discord channel or Discord server. It's got many channels dedicated to Creature Quest, a place for team building help, and advice as well as even a channel to voice your suggestions or even share your codes because I know a lot of people love sharing their codes. And if you do have a code to redeem, you should try this code that's listed down below. Hopefully you all have a fantastic day. Wish you all the best of luck in your own adventures and happy questing.